Hey, it's Mr. Johns. Welcome to this edition of Scale Modeling. And uh, this time around, we are building the 29 Model A Roadster uh, kit that, when I saw it on the shelf, I just had to pick it up. And just the artwork on the cover of the box drew me in. The fact that it's a uh, uh, convertible, the fact that it's uh, flat black with a racing number on the side. Um, I'm not really sure what the 78 B means, I don't know, um, but I love the uh, the red wheels with the chrome and the white wall tires, just all around beautiful, uh, beautiful car. So super excited to uh, to build it. So I looked at the back of the box and it looks like I can build it in two different styles. Um, and that would be um, either a high boy or a low boy, which I didn't really know uh, much about, so I had to do a little bit of reading. Now the high boy is when the body is built on top of the frame, uh, giving it a little higher, more aggressive stance, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, a little less work if you're building a real one. Um, and then the other style, a low boy or a channeled Model A, is when you uh, build it down over the frame. And hey, lower, in my opinion, is always better, so I decided to go with that. Uh, and then I also decided to go with the smaller of the two engines. And so historically, the 29 Model A Roadster was a huge success, obviously, uh, for the, the Ford company. And uh, in the 50s, there was a bunch of 29s sitting around. People had already upgraded to other cars, other vehicles. And uh, another thing happened uh, in the 50s and that is the big V8 engines came out so people were taking these 29 Fords and j dropping huge engines into them and then doing a bunch of customization and it's like the perfect roadster so very very cool um, remember that on the on the box when you pick it up at the at the hobby store uh, or online or wherever it tells you what colors that you will need now this is obviously optional but if you want to uh, follow what's on the box. Um, at least gives you an idea of of what you're going to p have to pick up if you don't already have these at home. So, here's uh, another shot of the. I, I just loved it so much when I took the plastic off the box. Just had to take another uh, another photo of that. Just artwork alone. I would love to draw that. That is just uh, wonderful. I love how the background is blurred, giving it the sense of movement. Uh, very very cool. So when you open it up, you have a bunch of parts. Now this is a level five model, so that that means difficulty and and sheer number of parts. So uh, if, if this is uh, not your um, uh, you know a hundredth model, maybe this is not the one for you. It it it's, it can be pretty challenging. Um, I, at first I thought it's such a small little car how how tough can it be and then i realized how much uh how much chrome and detail is especially on the bottom which i will show you so you know when you do when you do modeling it's always good to to paint the parts on the sprue and those are the plastic parts um the plastic frame that holds all those parts on so you know uh, one of the enemies of uh good scale modeling uh, is fingerprints and so if you keep it on the sprue, pretty easy to avoid fingerprints. And also another uh, tip is to go ahead and do all the colors at once. Why not, right? So here I am doing uh, some aluminum or steel. You know, I, I, I typically don't care. Um, I'm not doing a competition or, or, or entering this in a contest. And so the difference between chrome, aluminum, and steel, you know, um, not that big of a deal to me. So I just have... I think aluminum, some kind of silver color, and I just basically paint every part that needs to be silver at once. Why not? You got the brush um, already uh, dirty with silver, and you might as well paint everything. And that's just a good, it's just a good habit, so that when you get to those parts later, they will already be painted and already be dry. So, uh, the engine is almost always the first step in a uh, in a model. And here I am um, painting mine red. Um, and black. So transmission end is red and then the engine block is black with uh, some some silver and chrome parts on top. Uh, you can see I didn't quite get those perfectly lined up straight. I also chose not to do spark plug wires this time around. Um, that can really add a lot of realism. I just wasn't up to it <laughs> this time. So just gonna leave it the way it is. 
Um, and here is the uh, engine mounted onto the frame. Now what I didn't have a take a picture of is uh, taking the frame out in the backyard and shooting it with a flat black or matte black spray. Um, uh, it could have been gloss black or satin black. It didn't really matter, but this whole car is going to be kind of a, a matte black. And so I, since I was buying spray paint, I just bought one can of matte black. And so shot the, uh, it's always good to spray paint the bigger parts. Otherwise you see it, not only does it take a lot of time to brush it, but you tend to see the brush strokes on the bigger parts. And so I like to do the bigger parts outside with spray paint. Uh, here I flip it over and, and I've installed the engine uh, and the chrome um, oil pan. And I start, here is where I start to realize that there's a lot of little parts on the bottom, which is great. Um, but there's, it just, I was amazed at how many parts there were. And I just continue to add little pieces and parts and uh, uh, usually don't see that much detail on the bottom. So it's, uh, that was unusual. So flip it over and uh, here's my gas tank is up on the back and then the battery, uh, I don't know if that's the battery box, probably not the battery box in back. I don't remember exactly what that part is now that I think about it, but I don't remember a battery being up front. So maybe their battery is in the back of the Model A's. Uh, that's, that's a little detail I overlooked. Um, and here is just kind of a test fit of the body. Um, and the wheels and so you can see the wheels um, they have a, a chrome ring that you simply press into the wheel which is real nice it's hard to do a it's hard to do a hand painted uh, silver line or, or white wall tires which ends up being a decal which I've never done before either so a few a few firsts for me on this one so uh, here I have the stick shift you can see there in the middle. That is the, actually the stick shift, nice up and high, <clears throat> sticking up from the floorboard. And it's starting to look like the Roadster, which I really, really love. And so um, here I think uh, you can see that um, I don't have the door handle on yet and uh, haven't done any decals, but the steering wheel is in, the steering wheel. Uh, it was chrome, but I ended up painting it black. I just didn't like the chrome a little too modern So I painted it black and then here are the white wall tires now. There's a little bit of wrinkling here. I mean this I've never put a uh, a Decal on a rubber tire before and so the tires are not a flat surface um, And it was a little tricky to get on what I learned is you can't just pick up the a circle decal with your finger and lay it flat because it'll just fold and turn into a pretzel. So the, when you have it sitting in a bowl of water, pick it up with um, the little piece of cardboard that it was on originally, keep it flat, and then transfer it to the surface, in this case, uh, the wheels. And uh, I did kind of squeeze out some, some of those wrinkles, but it never ended up perfect. But still, the look is way better than without the white. Um, so here's a front view. I've got the headlights installed. Uh, those are very cool. I te technically couldn't find the actual mounting place for those headlights, um, so I really just glued them in place. So um, with again, with all the chrome and all the little detail, uh, some of the little mounting spots got a little bit hard to find. And so here's uh, what it looks like when I got the chrome uh, door handle on and uh, painted the steering wheel black. Got the windshield in and everything else looks pretty sweet. So here's a, a rear view. So uh, the tail lights were chrome, which is a little bit of uh, red paint for the light and then a, a license plate mounted on. Uh, it's nice to have the choice of like four or five license plates. And from previous models, I keep a box full of decals. And so I have all kinds of choices here and I decided not to do any uh, other decals there were there was rust decals there was pinstriping and there was of course that the number the racing number on the side and I just decided to skip that and just keep it black um, also one of the bigger decisions was uh, what color the interior should be um, I did not do a very good job painting that seat now that I look at it I did go a little heavy and it kind of uh, uh, went on uh, didn't go on very smooth so all these little pox that you see on the back seat uh, that was me just a little too heavy and that's unusual for me I'm usually pretty good with my spray paint but I was gonna go white um, I was gonna go um, red 
and uh, of course it came with some decals what you could you could uh, put decals where the texture part of the seats were um, uh, and some of the pictures on the box show brown interior uh, like leather uh, with with a leather um, trim and stuff like that i just kept it black so i think it turned out okay and uh if you get a chance to pick this kit up just be prepared for a lot of chrome work but you know all in all i think it's just a really really cool looking model and i'm so excited to display it uh, among my others and so if you get a chance to pick it up pick it up and go build it or another model of your choice what a great hobby uh, you really do kind of feel like you're building the car you know um if you can't afford the forty thousand dollar, sixty thousand uh, dollar version, you buy a twenty five dollar model, and you you get the, the to experience some of the thrill of building and painting it yourself. So super fun. Uh, go build a model for now, Mr. Johns. Out.